There are families that are mourning the death of uh, their members who unfortunately lost their lives in the Kintampo accident that happened uh, Monday dawn that left 31 people dead. It's very sad that this is happening. Exactly a year ago, uh, March 22nd, actually, 2019, is when another accident claimed the lives of 70 people on that same stretch. And we're back here again talking about this accident. Unfortunately, uh, a majority of them probably died in the fire, and so they were bent beyond recognition. And I'm hearing that there's the possibility that there'll be a mass burial because they might not be able to identify these people and that's very heartbreaking but then it begs the question are we flouting the road regulations um, are we really paying attention to all that is being taught is the National Road Safety Authority actually doing its job ensuring that people pay attention to these road regulations I remember that when the Dompoasi road crash happened in January there was a statement that they made it was quite emphatic and they said that while we commiserate with the families of victims of this incident, the authority has, um, pursuant to its mandate, commissioned a multidisciplinary crash investigation into the crash to determine the contributory factors and institutional lapses that may have occurred. And amongst others, it will inform remedial actions and measures as well. So question is, did they really go ahead? to ensure that um, enough people were educated because they said they were going to educate as many commercial drivers as possible and train them as well on road safety regulations. Was that uh, really done? If that was done, why are we still um, experiencing such high numbers losing their lives in road carnages? And so joining me in the studios right now is Kwame Kodria Etuahene. He's the head of regulations, inspection and compliance at the National Road Safety Authority. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. And this is definitely not not a, a good conversation to have, especially because families unfortunately have lost the lives of their loved ones. I know you, you mentioned that, um, well, the authority mentioned that this was a driver error that happened. Was yeah. that really true? Yes, we haven't, um, um, that statement is not coming from us. Okay, it's not, yes. okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning to your viewers once again. Uh, typically, when these incidents occur, we will try to do. A crash investigation. We've had uh, snippets of information from the police uh, suggesting that there were issues of um, driver tiredness or fatigue. Yeah. We, we, we are unable to confirm that until um, we get onto the incident scene and also carry out our own um, level of understanding. So you haven't even gone to the scene yet? We have. Some of our staff and our team in the regions have been on the um, location, but when we talk about crash investigation beyond the staff of the authority, mm. uh, there's often a crash investigation team that includes um, a road engineer, a police officer. Uh, at some point, we even involve psychologists or some sociologists, some safety professionals, just to try to understand a lot more beyond what happened on the on the surface. Okay, uh, and that to be done. Um, so even though. There are concerns of uh, driver fatigue uh, based on eyewitness account mm -hmm. and stories that we have heard. Uh, we, to a very large extent, uh, um, can confirm that one, it is one of the major contributory uh, factors to crashes. But as yeah. far as this incident is concerned, we need to do a, a bit more work to be able to validate this particular um, yeah, that concern. Okay, but there was a crash on that same stretch just a year ago, yeah. March 22nd. And I'm sure that the NRSA, um, you know, decided to investigate to find out what the problems were and to at least try and put in place some measures to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Why are we back at this same point talking about an accident that has claimed about 30 lives on the same stretch? Uh, first of all, we need to put the this discussion in some perspective. Mm. Yes, it is true that uh, we've had to investigate, I think, about two or three high-level uh, incidents that involved high-occupancy mm -hmm. vehicles on that stretch. And it's true that uh, some recommendations were made. But the question is always what, what happens beyond these recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, not too long we had gone to carry out a similar investigation at, at um, Don Poise. Yeah. Uh, we had done a similar at um, an, an incident that occurred on the Accra Kumasi mm -hmm. Highway on their flower stretch. Uh, that's uh, a, a, a number of them that we have done institutionally or administratively until recent. There was a policy that when there's any crash involving public 
um, service vehicles leading to the loss of five or more lives, we need to try to understand what happened. Yeah. Unfortunately, for a long while, um, because of some constraints with the mandates of the authority, and then you, you, you notice that the authority until August last year was a commission. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of the limitations in our mandate, many of these recommendations which come out of um, these investigations, investigations yeah. uh, get stuck at one point or the other. What are these limitations? Uh, because you make the recommendation to the affected institution and you do not have the power to ensure that it is carried out. So if you're saying that you're going to start training um, what a number of commercial drivers on road safety regulations and all of that. Was that just a recommendation? I thought you emphatically stated that this is what you intend to do. Yes, in respect of that, we're doing that. You are and doing yes, it. Yes, in fact, towards the end of last year, um, we had a program to train, I think, close to about 10,000 of drivers that we considered high-risk um, drivers. Those apply major yeah. routes. So then what are the other things you couldn't do as a result no, of so, constraints? So normally you make recommendations for the operator okay. and the transport operator to put in place some policies for public good. Mm -hmm. But because you do not have the mandate to ensure that that is done, um, it is often taken as an advice. You, ha you have to explain to me when you say you don't have the mandates because you are the authority. So you need mm -hmm. to ensure now, regardless. Now, mm -hmm. so we have just become an authority. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we were not. We're just a commission. Let me try and explain that okay. properly. So as a commission, um, the law that sets us up, um, sets the institution up as um, an, essentially as an advocacy institution. Okay which is to lead public sensitization and awareness on matters of risk and contributory factors to, to accidents. Okay. Okay. And also as a coordinating body. Coordination in the sense of trying to influence what others do with research and data. Okay. Uh, but if any of these institutions found any excuse or any reason not to comply with what is it that you have recommended, mm -hmm. there was absolutely very little you could do. I see. And that is what led to the need to review the mandate uh, for us to become an authority. Mm -hmm. and, and since August of last year, that is where we are now. Okay. And, and what is about changing is that at present, we have the mandate to sanction institutions. Yeah. Uh, we could impose administrative penalties. And in instances where we have issued a permit or license for others to do a number of things, mm -hmm. we are in a position to revoke or suspend these licenses and permits. Except to add very quickly that since August and now, even though the law, the new law was passed in August, yeah. there's a requirement on us to do a number of things. Um, for instance, for us to develop a regulations. Mm -hmm. You haven't done we that? We haven't done that. We are Why in the process has it taken of, so long? Well, it takes a bit of time. Okay. In fact, Parliament in its wisdom gave us up to August of this year I see. to come back to them with a the regulation. Okay. But some work is being done on it um, so that we can begin to uh, exercise a bit of control in that environment. Okay. So, so when you ask, so when that is done or mm -hmm. at present, so what would change as far as recommendations are concerned? In the past, we would have made these recommendations and you failed to act on them, we're constrained. Mm -hmm. Now, if we make the recommendations and you fail to act on them, the law gives us a mandate to issue sanctions. Okay. And, and How severe are these sanctions? Or are you waiting for the law to be passed before you can give me those details? Oh, the, 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 the parent law gives a, 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 a framework. Okay. Um, I think between 10,000, in, in monetary terms, between 10,000 and 240,000 Ghana cities. Uh, depending on the severity and what's an issue. And the, 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 the details will be spelled out uh, when the regulations um, are ready. And, 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 and we hope to be able to influence the way uh, things happen mm -hmm. as far as institutional culture of safety uh, is concerned. Okay. Well, you did mention that when you were commissioned, your mandate was to sensitize the public yeah. um, you know, on road safety regulations. Just this morning, there have been some statistics as to how many people have passed on yeah. um, between January and now. 
and and it's very disturbing that we have over 300 almost 400 people yeah. who have lost their lives now talking about sensitizing people how far have we gone with that because of course you have mentioned that you know you try to train some people you've talked about the need to respect the road uh, regulations and all of that but have you even um, co worked with the media in terms of having a constant message out there to educate people and all of that because I don't see much of that going on yes um, a lot is being done on that side um, currently that's a certain um, mobilization with um, um, some media institutions I, I think mm. media general is one yeah. uh, working with GJ and other recognized keep and other recognized institutions to do as much as we can is it enough I think that as far as, um, having said that, as far as sensitization is concerned, I would want to believe and say with uh, all the uh, force of energy or certainty I have that we have these incidents occurring not because road users are not aware. There's a lot that has been achieved in that space. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Um, and I, I often would say that let us just hit the road and talk to 10 drivers mm -hmm. and try to tease the understanding of all the risk or contributory factors that lead to these crashes and, and what we can do to minimize it. They know. I mean, so why are they not complying? In, in discipline. That's where we are. I have every certainty that as far as that knowledge and the level of awareness is concerned, as many people have become knowledgeable in these matters, much more than it, it was before um, the, the commission authority came into mm -hmm. existence. Even though we have um, constraints to do with numbers, but we work with the media on a regular basis, we are engaging um, uh, operators, we are engaging passengers. So uh, there's on ground sensitization yes, as well. For the last 10 years, for instance, we found a way to work with the Ghana Education Service to have our kids uh, being exposed to um, road safety road in the school environment. And, and when you look at the numbers, uh, for the last 10 years, there's been a significant reduction in child related fatalities. But the reality of where we are today is that. In as much as people have become very knowledgeable in these risk factors, typical of us, we have also grown very indisciplined. So we have all the information, we get into the road environment and we indulge in all manner of um, unpleasant practices. But we're not caring it. Because even the authority that's supposed to ensure, and I'm not talking about the national yeah. resident, I'm talking about the policeman yeah. who's supposed, or the NTTD, they are on the streets to ensure that drivers adhere to the rules. You give them maybe something small and they let you go. Yes, I mean, those are constraints, and um, these are issues that we take up with the police each time we get the opportunity. And that mm -hmm. they must also um, keep their house in order and deal with the few miscreants that appear to give them. Um, um, a negative image and also affect the assurance uh, that the public um, expects from all of us. Mm. But enforcement is critical and that's why we want to look at enforcement from the point of control. You see, there is absolutely no example of anywhere that safety has achieved significant progress where it, where it was achieved by education alone. Mm -hmm. There's no example. Okay. So you can educate as many people as possible. If road users fail to abide by um, the existing regulations, you have these concerns. For instance, let's assume that the um, Kintampo incident mm -hmm. is a case. Mm -hmm. Every driver who is worth his license have gone through training um, or to know what to do when you are tired. Gone through training, yes, that we cannot accept in. No, I mean gone through training to be licensed. Okay, so every driver worth his license, who has been licensed to drive, mm -hmm. knows or ought to know that after every four hours you, you ought to take a break. Or uh, when you have any sense of tiredness, um, you, you need must to take a, break. take a break. But we're just talking about this, that if the owner of the truck says that I'm giving you a target, you need to bring in as much at this point. Even if I'm tired, because I have to make sure I make the money, I'll still try and go beyond, Yes, you know. So, so that's why we want to use regulation to cure um, some of these excesses. So, so does it then affect the owners of the vehicles who are also placing high targets on their drivers as well? Of course. Well? Um, when we get into that regime, um, practically what will happen is this. If you want to run a transport business, you would have to apply for a permit to do so. Currently, there's nothing like that? Regrettably. 
There's nothing like that. Regrettably, there is absolutely no public institution of, in this country that has responsibility of ensuring that um, the commercial transport of, um, sector is, 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 um, is regulated. It's regulated. No, it's never happened. Wow. And that's the reality of where we are. It's never happened. So today, if you have money to buy a bus, you get a yellow, yellow um, license. license plate. Yeah. Uh, DVLA requires that you visit them twice a year. You get a driver who is licensed, and that's enough. And, and even the driver, they don't ensure that the driver is trained? Well, so once you have a license, the, pres enough. the presumption is that you have been trained. If you, because you have to sit in for a test. And, but and we all live in Ghana where we know that people are able to cut costs well, and I get mean, some of those are license. Those are constraints, but I, I think in recent times, a lot that's also changing within the uh, DVL space. We need to give credit as well. But as far as um, these public service transport vehicles are concerned, that's where we are. There's no regulation. There's no regulation. There's no, there's no institution um, that, for instance, issues a license to an operator. And, and whose job was it to ensure that this sector is regulated and they are not That's what I'm saying, job? that um, of all the various um, safety-related institutions that are in existence, it was essentially nobody's job to do so until we found a way to revise the law in 2019. Okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we approach that space, uh, we try to say that it's very common or similar to what happens in the airspace. So if you want to run air transportation, you have to register your business. Um, mm -hmm. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority would ensure that uh, if you're a pilot, every six months you go to, to school. If your, if your aircraft is not airworthy, uh, it will be grounded. If you are not careful, your licenses may even be revoked. Yeah. We didn't have that level of practice or culture as far as the road environment is concerned. Mm. And that's what we've been advocating for for the last 10 years. Okay. Fortunately, we now have the law. Okay. But we need to do a little more to get the relevant um, legislative instrument in place to give more effect to the law. And, and when that happens, you would apply for a license or a permit to operate a commercial business, all the... All the operators, GPRT, USTC, VIP. They are all uh, not regulated. That's, that's the point. Unbelievable. You're surprised, but that's the reality. And, and it's been on the cut for, for quite a, a number of years, I could say the last 10 years. So, so that's sometimes the, the bit of um, frustration the authority has to. Hmm. You, you get it. When these matters come up, um, we have a discussion as though there's a lot that could be done, but mm -hmm. the necessary um, structures and legislations that you need to do what is reasonable or what is being reasonably done in other yeah. foreign-looking jurisdictions were not at play. When is this law coming into play? So Parliament has given us up to August to work. This particular law to um, regulate yes. commercial... Okay. Uh, we, are, we are trying so hard to be able to meet... Uh, that deadline. There's a technical team at present that is putting together um, the regulation, looking at some best practice examples and also reflecting on our own socioeconomic circumstances to, to have that addressed. Okay. But when that happens, I, I, we need to assist the public to appreciate um, the changes. So today you have the Bank of Ghana, for instance, um, based on certain conditions, uh, decides that some banks are unable to function because they have not met some, some yeah, guidelines. Some, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll get to a stage where, where you clamp down on some of these ex exactly. institutions. Just as, well. as um, the Ghana Civil Aviation can uh, suspend operations of an operator, we will get there. So basically, our lives have been toyed with for many years. Yes, we, we will get there. That's the sad reality. Uh, and, and that's about to change. But we will need the public to be a bit patient with us. Um, so that we can put in place those structures. And at least for nothing at all, um, in, in that space mm -hmm. where you have institutions um, <coughs> committing to provide these transport services, we can exercise some control. But it's not just about them. It's not just about the, op the transport operators. Mm -hmm. For instance, road, road, se road sector agencies. Yeah. Um, in the road environment, roads are supposed to be constructed based on standards. Yeah. It, it may not be enough to have a flat road which is not marked or do not have the necessary signages 
um, to give warning to, to drivers. Mm -hmm. So if any of these matters also come up which are standard related, the new mandate of the authority requires a number of things to be done, including um, imposition of administrative penalties. Because um, over the last 20 years, we have found out of experience that it is not all the time that these institutions um, work on your prompting, even if it will provide uh, public safety guarantees. Mm. But once you begin to sanction, and, then it would. Uh, yes, then, then okay. there's, a, there's a certain expectation that. So uh, currently there's no jail term? Or it depends on the level of. Jail term? Yeah. So there are two things happening. Mm -hmm. On the one side of the coin, you have the Road Traffic Act, yeah. which um, mandates the police to enforce um, offenses that are um, individual driver related. So if you choose to drink and drive, then that you would that have will, to pay for. Yeah. If you speed. Mm -hmm. But what we are seeking to do is to look at the institution. So the transport operator who has supervision over this driver, what was he supposed to do? to prevent his driver mm -hmm. from indulging in drink driving. What was he supposed to do to ensure that this driver does not um, f um, drive tired? Yeah. What was he supposed to do um, to ensure that uh, his vehicles were maintained, for instance? What was he supposed to do to ensure that until he gets to the EVLA, his vehicle is in good condition and meets all the requisite um, standards? Yeah. If there are any laps, the new mandate of the authority permits us to impose sanctions against the institution. Okay. So that the police may also choose to deal with the individual mm. drivers as the case may be. All right. Incredible revelation here that the commercial um, transport sector is not regulated, but then they're working on it. I've been speaking to Kwame Kodria Etua Hene for um, uh, the National Road Safety Authority. He's the head of regulations, inspections, and compliance. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, uh, but on the show. very quickly. You want to <coughs> say something? Yes, yeah. we want to um, appeal that the public would um, be a bit calm. It is very difficult at this time, but um, the Kintampo stretch, even though a number of incidents have occurred in the last uh, three or four years, yeah. it may be um, out of place, respectfully, to suggest that um, to create a certain measure of panic whilst we look at these concerns. And the public should be assured that those of us in the road safety authority and the safety environment are equally concerned because we come into the road environment and we are exposed to the same risk. Mm -hmm. And we are committed to work out an improvement so that it will support our, our use of the road and that of the public. With a bit of patience, once we get these regulations in place, uh, there's every reason to be excited about the future. I, I don't know if people have patience, especially with the number of people that have died. But then again, uh, we're hoping that this can be done as soon as possible. So thank you again, Kwame Kodia Atiahene from the National Road Safety Authority. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you.